What's good YouTube? Today we're going to talk about the most asked questions on the channel and that would be can I win? Can I play this deck? Or can I even play without Pot of Desires? There's a very very simple yet complex answer to that but the answer is yes you can play this without Desires. Yes you can win without Desires. We've seen multiple people take decks to regionals and top without desires and even the YCS level but you're at a clear clear disadvantage because pot of desires even though you have all the jokes surrounding it that it's a minus nine that it's you know gonna hurt you we've even seen it in a YCS finals where it banished three dupe frogs overall pot of desires got Michael State there to that situation where it could even happen to him so it gives you a clear advantage because you are getting one of the only plus ones that the entire game has to offer with no restriction other than you can only play this card once per turn for the most part and there are even cards that can interact with it and it's quite expensive cyframe lord omega 45 to 50 dollars right now i believe usually goes for 60 uh it's we're just out of the competitive season it may pick back up uh once that you know kind of lull is over and we go to zodiac format but i'm not sure how prominent omega will be in that format but omega is able to touch your face down banish cards and put them back into the graveyard so in ddds people are like well i don't want to banish my resources with desires yes you want to draw those extra cards so you can get the combo hands and ddds have the fortunate ability to churn out synchros so cyframe lord omega can start sending slimes back to graveyard for massive advantage during turns but you're gonna have to live so the the thing about doing your banished is that you're actually leaving your omega vulnerable uh because then it goes to their main phase and they can kaiju it and they can do other things to it but he's an amazing resource and if they don't have the kaiju whoosh, there goes a the card out of the hand too on top of gaining the extra resource so it's kind of like the budget player's nightmare here pot of desires is so expensive it's usually uh 70 plus we've saw, seen it hit up to 90. so to play two of these is 140 dollars. that's like a nintendo ds that's pretty insane and to play three is a gaming console on its own almost 200 dollars. that's actually just insane for just cards in your deck but the fortunate thing is you can put it in pretty much any deck that's not exodia exodia is like the only example of a deck i would not play this and you can play it in paleozoics you definitely want to play it in abcs you want to play it in metal foes almost every deck wants to run at least probably two of these that is in the metagame itself ddds like i said you'll be able to use omega to resource back cards pot of desires can put you in bad situations though like uh, that's the joke is it can banish your resources like those do frogs uh you can end up banishing other resources drawing another pot of the desires and in a sense minusing because you banished resources and you got another card but overall this card is just pure power but can you top without it let's look at why it does better in certain scenes than others first is the regional scene and this is where we see a lot of lists top without desires the thing is uh, there's a difference between the regional scene and the YCS scene. In the regional scene, you have a lot more casual strategies. People are trying out fun things. They want to top with wacky things. And some people just go to have a day off and enjoy it. So a lot of people aren't throwing money into like their decks in order to play in a regionals. But for a YCS, look how many people can attend a YCS. It's actually just insane. Like, uh... <laughs> it's it's not even close it's it's insane like 1600 people at ycs bokum uh ycs bokum was one of the most attended european events ever if not the most attended i'm pretty sure it was the most attended event ever in history and we we see it here like look at how many people are in this room but the fact of the matter is a lot of them paid to get here they paid for flights they paid for a hotel so budget's not an like kind of thing for a lot of these players so you're going to be facing a field that has this natural advantage of having pot of desires like you have pot of desires in almost all these players decks i would say maybe 60 percent plus because they are willing to pay that extra money to travel there but at a regional you're just hopping in a car with some friends paying some gas and going to get there
So the regional seems a lot more relaxed. It's smaller fields, and it just really depends what you're trying to do with these decks. I don't know your intentions when you ask me, can I play this without desires? The answer is yes, and yes, you can even top regionals without desires. You can win locals without desires, but a YCS is so much less likely because it is just power. It is consistency throughout a day. It is actual, like, just insanity that this card gives such an advantage it's it's literally i activated one card i now have two but there's a long road to that so i want to say to everyone asking it do the best of your ability if you cannot afford desires there are options for you and you can play competitively you can top even a ycs your route is just so much harder and much less likely in my opinion it's just the most controversial card in the game as well it actually makes you interact with a total of 13 cards in your deck the desires itself the two you draw the 10 you banish the only cards in history that were used in meta i believe that interacted with a lot more of your deck were probably reasoning and decks that just milled a ton of cards and only played about four months monsters and then uh, monster gate as well on that same kind of route so i really think there's just so much about this card that makes it what its price is at it's actual insanity but it's really good now the other most qu asked questions on my channel john can you put the deck list in every single description um yes i could but that's actually an insane amount of work for me for what I already do. I'm already putting up every deck list. And the thing about these deck lists are, the reason I even show these on my channel, I've heavily considered not doing deck lists anymore because they clog my feed, they hurt my other videos. Uh, the reason I do deck lists are to give the player a voice. I want you to sit there and listen to the player. I don't want you to just click on the video give it a view and then go click on the deck list the point of all these deck lists are for the player to have a voice i want the player to be known and at these events these are the kind of events as you see on the screen that i'm showing deck lists off from so i want you to hear why they had those choices why they did or didn't play desires why they did the things they did why they played 41 and upstart you know those kind of silly things that do happen in the tournament scene i want you to kind of hear the voice of the author to so to speak because i did not accomplish those things i did not do those things the players that i am featuring did these things and i get the convenience of having a deck list in the description but a it's a ton of work for me to set that up and it's not that i'm lazy it's that that is not the point of why I do these. So I, I've been asked in tons of videos over and over, and I've replied the same thing every single time. Uh, I'm just not going to do that, even for the live profiles. The point of this channel is not to be a deckless channel, or even the point of highlighting these decks is not to you know show off the deck it's to give the players a voice that's what house of champs is about when it comes to deck list now another thing with deck list uh that i often get asked why are you even featuring this deck it's the same as the last ones well it's along these same lines the player has the voice this is for the player and their accomplishment it's not to say here's another abc deck that's very very similar to this abc deck and there's a lot of differences in these decks if you actually look yes you you might have seen this combination of cards before in a sense but there's different ratios there's different things going on with these decks the meta is evolving and even these niche changes do matter if you're keeping up week to week in the competitive play so when you all are telling me like i don't want to see another one of these decks well i'm going to be featuring another and another and another and another one of these decks because these players did something they top aided the channel is a point to where anybody can come and show off their accomplishment on house of champs as long as they're not total scum and known as a cheater because i don't feature those people but overall i want the people who want to come be featured and show off their accomplishment and look back because I have 23 regional tops. If I could go back and look at any of them, I did a lot of really funny things to top regionals. Like a 58 fi a card final countdown stall burn deck was my first regional top ever. That's insanity. It's way back when. But we look through formats like I played uh, Dandelion uh, during Gravekeeper's formats. I played the, the quick draw dandy deck. And that deck was on a huge decline, but I managed to top two regionals with it. And I would have liked to go back, see that, and remember the day. So this is for those players. It's 
not necessarily for all of you on the channel, but it's also a resource information pool. You're able to go see, okay, what's different in all these ABC decks if you're an ABC player? What's different in all these Metal Foes decks if you're a Metal Foes player? Oh, here's some awesome Rogue decks. I love featuring those decks that top that are Rogue and even come close. That's why I even started featuring decks outside of the top eight and went to like top 20. I wanted to feature decks that were not featured, but the only time I feature outside of top eight is if it has not been featured on the channel during that regional season. And if it's, you know, out there like Spellbook Demise, Raid Raptors just topped, like all these awesome decks. So I love showing them all off. I don't feature decks just because I know a lot of you guys are new to the channel. The channel's been growing insanely. So I do want you to thank you for kind of getting used to what I do as we hit a regional season. We will be streaming two regionals these upcoming weeks. We will be streaming Houston this weekend and then DDD hits and we will be featuring San Antonio. So you will have probably around 18 duels and hopefully a lot of deck profiles for you guys from the top cut of those. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hearing me rant a little bit about that last part. But again, this is more so to feature can i win without desires also like these are all the most asked questions on the channel and i thought it was important to answer them